Previously on Pokemon Horizons, Freed arranges for Liko, Roy, and Dot to attend the Rahat Academy to learn more about terrestrialization. After they receive their Terra Orbs, they're assigned to travel across Paldea and participate in the Gym Challenge, where if they pass, they get to keep their newfound power. What other adventures await for our trio? Let's find out now! EP Artiverse! This week, it's Dot's turn to take her Terrastal test, with the gym leader this time being somebody we've already met from previous episodes, Iono, and she suggests to perform their battle on Iono's livestream. With Dot nervous about battling on camera, Iono suggests to use her Needle Thing persona to take the test. But when the costume gets stolen by a wild rever room, that's when things get complicated. Will Dot and Quaxi be able to recover her costume? Let's find out. To start things off, let's talk about one of my favorite parts from this episode, being the unexpected inclusion to all the rising Volt Tacklers. Yes, everyone is here. Well, for two reasons. The first being that this is where the group is residing because Orla is still making repairs for the Ravasagi. The other reason being they want to show their support for Dot. Heck, even Murdoch comes to Lavincia and he treats everyone to some of Katie's sweets, which I didn't expect for them to bring back. We also got to talk about Iono's inclusion here because as soon as they meet up with the Rising Volt Tacklers, that's when we learn Iono was waiting for them and wants to pitch the idea to Dot about performing their battle on a live stream. This episode also acts as the setup to Dot's first terrestrial battle. At first, Iono provides a test stream where Roy and Dot rehearse a practice battle. Unfortunately, Dot starts to suffer from camera anxiety since she's not used to presenting herself as well herself. This causes her the battle, and this is where Iono suggests to try something that'll dazzle her viewership, like using Needle Thing. After testing this with a public stream, she's on board with the idea, but Quaxley is against this decision because they want Dot to overcome her anxiety. Heck, even Liko notices that Dot is forcing this persona to dodge facing this anxiety. And while Dot is still on the fence, unfortunately her costume gets stolen, which forces Dot and Quaxley to be put into position to fight against the Rever Room with the drawing crowd. I I like how this episode is tackling on the topic of both camera and social anxiety, since this is something we never really see too often from the anime. It's very refreshing, especially with how they present this with Dot's character, and it demonstrates amazing growth since we first started the series. The only thing I'm a bit perplexed about is how Rever Room just shows up as a plot device to move the story forward, but the execution is still top notch. And I love how the conclusion comes down to Dot facing Iono as herself, and not through her costume. How will the battle go down? We'll just have to see. But for now, let's talk about the fun easter eggs and other feats from this episode. Firstly, it's the advertisements across Lavincia showing the starters from their early to their mid-stage evolutions. Lavincia is also very full of life with trainers and Pokemon roaming about in the background. And the architecture is still pretty great here too. The battle between Quaxi and Rever Room showcased amazing visuals and amazing animation, especially from Quaxi's low sweep. And the track they used for the second half of the battle was pretty great too. Overall, it was very unexpected for Dot's first Terrastal test to be a two-parter. But with this first part taking care of the bulk and getting the introductions out of the way, I'm very excited to see how they'll showcase Dot and Iono's battle, since we'll have more time to focus on it. We give Dot and Needle Thing part one a nine out of 10. So, who wants some wasabi? 